Hello, this is Buck News, and today we're going to talk about the Netflix series, The Crown, but not necessarily the royal family in detail, but more or less about a particular character that was uh, portrayed in, in The Crown. That person was named Sidney Johnson, and surprisingly, we haven't, we don't have anything to date, to the best of my knowledge, on this individual because of the position that he held, so, um, and how he helped others that were in that circle move up all right not necessarily within the crown but around the crown who who is the queen all right uh, and we're talking about british because you know there's many royal families out there that <laughs> don't get the light of day but uh basically what we have here is um sydney who's a of uh, african descent um by way of bahamas he was um, born in Bahamas, I think Anadolus, and he was the personal valet to um, Prince Edward, who later became, I guess, Edward the Eighth, the King. Then he abdicated due to uh, uh, he wanted to marry his wife, Wella Simpson, um, and I think she was a divorcee. So, being that the, and I think it might have been a little while the husband is alive, you can't marry that 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 woman but also the one of the roles of the royal family head so in that case it was uh him and then when he abdicated it was uh queen elizabeth and then now it's uh charles but one of the major roles is that they're the head of the church and they have certain laws so i guess you know people are gonna look at them funny if he's he's marrying someone that's divorced and the husband is still alive um, based based on my what, from my understanding, so anyway, so I had, that played one aspect of why I had to educate. But one major reason was, uh, as you know, a, a lot of the royal family in England still had German ties. So during World War Two, well, not World War, yeah, World War Two, he was allegedly associated with Nazis on too many occasions. So that that um, may not have looked good with the, the Allies and things like that. So he abdicated. So then I, we're assuming that he moved to Bahamas, and I think they ran him out of the Bahamas because of the ab, you know abdication and I guess the people in the royal family, you know, the network of things. So he ended up in France. So you know, France don't you know they didn't care. He still probably had a little money, nice homes, things, or however he was being taken care of. But during this process, he had a personal valet, Sidney Johnson, who Sidney really didn't know anything. But I guess the guy was used to a certain lifestyle. He wanted to present a certain image, and he probably couldn't afford <laughs> to get a proper valet. He he hired Sydney. He trained Sydney up, and then Sydney became got internal knowledge of the royal family, what was going on, the power structure, things like that. You know, because remember this guy Edwards was in isolation, so the valet was like his all probably also his 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 managing of you know different not businesses but just his day-to-day -day activities so he knew a lot and he learned a lot so what the crown pointed out was that clout chasing muhammad Af Af Fayed, who's a successful businessman today and he was successful i think he owned harrods i, I don't know if that's the right department so, but he, he he purchased the ritz rich colton from the from the family of rich in France. All right, so they're in France. That's what Donny is. But we're going to go back even further in Fayette's life to show why we might clarify here about the qualification. So um, Fayette married Samari Kassahawk, and she was a Saudi woman. She was the founder of Al Shakur magazine, if, I, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and the mother of Dodi Fayed, who, as you know, was um, St. Princess Diana. But that came in that comes in later and we won't even talk about that in doing this but so Muhammad Fayyad family background was um, the way it's portrayed in the movie he was selling sodas on the side of the street I guess maybe he had some he was selling them maybe because Coca-Cola may have been new at the time and he was there maybe he had some type of you know distribution thing but his wife his former wife Samaria um was kind of elite and then she was a Saudi so you know 1940s and around that time you know the oil was coming in and um, she was in the founder of a magazine and author so she was she was educated so she probably had a little more money and status than Fayette so Fayette married her 
this put him in a business position because one of the things how they got married is, is that he had to make a deal with her brother. So the brother was betrayed. The brother probably said, well, she really likes the guy, but he can't come in our family looking like this. So she, he brought him in through the business deal to make him look a little better, allegedly. All right. So they only lasted like three years. I guess she found out he was cloud chasing and, and trying to move up in the world. I mean, so now Fayette was in the way it's portrayed in the movie. I mean, not the movie, but the Netflix series. If I had was infatuated with the royal family, and he was infatuated with the British lifestyle or the European lifestyle, because if I had's from Egypt, and then um, his wife at that time is from uh, Saudi Arabia. All right, so, um, so he, it's you know, he became a successful businessman, networking and things like that, and. He even experienced racism himself when he was trying to buy the rich. And but he probably didn't think it was because of the money he had, but he reached a point when you're talking about the rich, you're talking about a long line of you know, hotels and family history and things like that. So even if they needed the money, they still questioned him of how he's gonna handle the brand. So that's how he became partners with the Ritz. Um now after he did that, here's here's when Sidney Johnson came to play. So when Sidney was working at the Ritz, and he probably uh, probably because after King Edward, not King Edward, after Edward died, and or he was he was he was freelancing. I don't know. He was you, you know uh, moonlighting, and he was working at the Ritz. But he was he was the, like the head guy amongst all these elite French people, and the the launch of Dodie's not Dodie's hit. Um, Mohammed's uh, buying of the rich or buying into the rich and Fayed didn't want him there right now the funny thing is Fayed is from Egypt and I mean they say they're uh, white Egyptians and black Egyptians but he didn't want him there because he was black he's you know he didn't actually let's, let's take that back he didn't say that out of his mouth but it was implied so Dodi his son said well you know who that is right that was the personal valet to Prince Edward, Duke and Duchess of Windsor, and then, then, um, he, he, you know, so then, uh, I guess the discrimination on on Sydney, and I'm just call it what it is, like, well, how how that nizzle get up there, right? So Dodie called him to his, not Dodie, uh, Muhammad Fayed called him to his office, and he, you know, he asked him some questions, and then he said, well, no, Edward taught me everything about the royal family the structure how to be a, a gentleman how what's how you're supposed to dress and different things like that and what is expected what it, what is their culture so i mean i'm not in the royal family and in, in that culture but he he knew the culture of how you would be respected in that circle of the royal family so of course clout chasing muhammad said oh okay well you can stay on but you're going to be my personal valet so he so basically for for a few years Sydney was schooling Muhammad and then through the schooling this allowed Muhammad to be more European at the elite level because there's certain things he didn't know. He didn't know how to play golf, he didn't know nothing anything about honey. It was just certain things. So he <clears throat> and which clubs to go to, how to get into a position to meet the queen. And that's that was um uh Muhammad Al Fayed's goal. Because he was infatuated with the royal family. All right. So, ironically, when Dodie first met Diana, he was like, "Okay, yeah, whatever. Um, that's cool." But the queen. Now, here we go back to the racism. So, Dodie, uh, not Dodie, behind Muhammad, I forget, it was discriminated against. So the queen was coming. So you had to pay. You know, first time he was there, he was there, but he was like way, way back. It's an annual event or something. So then the second time he was there. Um. And this, well, I left for a piece out. So when how how Dodie finally got out to to get him to the front row with the queen with the royal family was that the wife Edward Wiley Simpson, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, died. So, and I don't think they have any kids or anything like that. But the funny thing is, so she died, right? So Sydney got the information. Oh, well, such and such died. So. You know the house is in disarray. No one's taking over the house. So, so he 
uh, Muhammad saw this opportunity. Oh, well, I can go buy the house. And he renovated the house. But he had all he had all the paintings and all the assets and everything. So you, some stuff Edward kept that was deemed historical value and of family value to the royal family. So Daddy, um, I keep saying, I don't know why I keep saying Daddy, but Muhammad used that to network because he's a businessman. So he knew he had leverage. It wasn't even the money of the house. He just wanted that leverage to also get into network and also be, you know, the, the old boys club more or less so um, he had so the what they showed was that the, the queen had a meeting with her family and the mother and i guess the sister so they it was a baby painting the mother was like no we want that and it was a couple more items like edward's desk they wanted that um it was uh it was just like a couple of items they wanted but they they didn't want to um, they wanted, and they also wanted um, uh, uh, Edward's personal papers. So those personal papers would be papers, you know, that could either burst the crown or burst the family, or information that you know that was leaked, letters and stuff. It's personal papers. So they had that. It was like a red box or something. So that's what they they wanted that those other items, but they really wanted that red box because they didn't know what's in it and they didn't want it in the press. So. Um, what they did was, you know, a little parlay going on. So the Queen's, I guess, her personal valet or her personal person that handles her business made the deal. But Dirty said the Queen had to come get it. So the Queen ain't, you know, the Queen ain't going to go get it because it, who, who the hell is he, you know? And he's from Egypt. <laughs> I mean, and it, I mean, she might be the Queen, but she was still from 1940, 1930 and beyond. So, you know, it's still some biases there. So the now this is how he he he. Uh, Muhammad played his cards right. So he said, "Okay, well, fine. She didn't have to come, but he l used that as a favor with the guy, the 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 person that would handle the queen's business, um, and that's how he got in position to be on the front row when the queen. So the queen saw him. She knew he paid money to get there, and then, um, he, but he had got the whole row. He was the only one there, right? So he had gotten the whole row. So he." He's because he, he told his son to come up and sit, so he had the whole row. So, but the queen, before the queen approached, she said, Well, who's that up there? And then the guy explained, and she's then he explained why. And then she said, Nah, you know, basically, she said, Who that? <laughs> I ain't gonna say that, but she said, who is, Who's that Egyptian up there? <laughs> and uh, uh, she said, No, so she sent Diana up to sit with him. So, Diana said, Well, you got me. But she knew what the deal was. So every, every, everyone in the, in the family played a role to do their what they were supposed to do at that point in time. Queen probably said, look, I ain't going up to him. I need you to go up there and do what you do. So she went up there, sat with the guy, and then they, they uh, kind of kicked it off. So that she met. that's when she first met Dodie. And Dodie kind of like, okay, yeah, whatever. I'm over here with some friends, right? You know, he went over and talked to his friends. So he wasn't, I guess he wasn't impressed. But that, what they were showing in the film, that Diana liked men from Southeast Asia. So when I say South East Asia, India, Pakistan, and uh, probably of course Egypt too, and yeah, they they show the scene when the woman who was given an actual puncture and then the doctor came up, and it's, you know the queen, I mean Princess Diana was kind of flirting with him. And this is of course after her divorce. Uh, that, was, that wasn't that episode, but it was in the previous episode. But so we tied all together. So now we are back to Sydney. So, um, so Sydney helped this guy uh, get in position. That he would have never gotten into, no matter how much money he he had. He was like Diddy. No offense, but I'm just saying. We, we're gonna say he was like you know he's like this. Oh, so he was, he was new money. He was like, <laughs> I've been here for a thousand years. <laughs> you know, <if> whatever. <laughs> There's plenty of people want to meet me, and I don't want to meet them. So that was the position that the royal family had, and he he is one of I think in one one of the episodes when they were showing Doty, not Doty Pass, but Muhammad's past. His family member, well, what, what did she do? Put a spell on you? Because I think he had seen her one time when she had came to Egypt to visit. And they, you know, due to the colonial rule, they really didn't like the British. So at this point, Sydney, Sydney was a major player. Well, not player, but an uh, influence and a consultant to Muhammad Fayyad's advancing into elite circles. And probably even still today. Now, what what they did show was that the relationship was became more of a friendship. I mean, he still he still worked for him, but and how Muhammad was taking care of Sydney because he he felt it fell ill 
Um, and then Sidney did have a wife. They didn't show his wife, and that he may have children. But the sad part of this is that um, Sidney, no, there's no documented records of, to the best of my knowledge, of Sidney and his influence. And there's also a lesson learned here that you could be in a position, and when you when you leave that position, you could you could be the man. Because that's what we learned. Sidney was the man. You know, even after Dodie Fire, I said, well, if he was that, that, you know, I was watching, I said, if, if Sidney was the guy to the king, to that person, he really don't need Muhammad. You know, it was just, he was used to doing that type of work. You know, well, you're going to say that you were uh, the royal violator. Everybody's like, oh, okay, well, this guy is a special person here, so we, we're going to hire him or whatever. And that's probably why the rich hired him. Yeah, they said, oh, yeah, this, this guy's like, <laughs> he's not like royalty, but he's he, he's like one of these statues around here, as far as they're concerned. And especially when they knew what he did, and they might have seen him in events and, and things like that. So, um, this is this is just about Sidney Johnson and what he did, his role in uh, Muhammad Sayyid's life, and also his role with the uh, British royal family. And this is bug news. What do you think? You just, you know, think, hey, whatever, he was just a butler, you know, whatever he did, what he did. Or do you think, you know, this is of, of some value and it should be looked into more and just for, just uh, to uplift, you know, Sidney Johnson. Um, and this is bug news. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Thank you very much.